Hello YouTube, this is a video on the turbulent noise node and the turbulence node. That's so difficult to say, so let's just get right into this. So in this video we'll cover some example projects of what you can use these nodes for. If you want to see how the nodes work, take a look at the previous two videos which shows you how that works. So first, the turbulent noise node. So in Harmony 20, you can just press enter and it'll create a new node. So turbulent noise node and let's shove that into our composite so you have to be on our render view for that to see that generates our grey screen so our first example is a while back I made a video on how to create water textures which will try and regenerate that into harmony so that's our first example so if we go to our so if we set our noise type to either Perlin or simplex and then set our fractal type to terrain you see it kind of creates these wavy lines we can increase our frequency and that makes them smaller or decrease the frequency which is what I want to do set it to about three and we want to leave our complexity at one and since there's no complexity if we set the gain to zero it won't do anything so this is step one from this I want to add a color curves node onto it now similar to how I did it in Photoshop I want to basically make it just so just so the black lines are fairly um, fairly thin. So we want to do it like that. So a curve like this, what this is saying with the color curves node is we're here, it's black, and then as soon as here, it's getting closer to white. Let's just bring that out, there we are. So that's our first one, and this will put color onto it. So this is our texture. Now the second one we want to create is turbulent, we want to create a turbulent noise node again. We don't want to see that for now, so let's disable that. And what we want for this one is to use the Perlin noise one and create some a texture that's set it to about 1.5 of just different coloured um, water because some of it will be darker, some of it will be lighter. So that will do. Now there's a few different ways you can increase uh, the black level on that. We can set it to something like threshold. Now I don't like that as a, as a texture. We could increase the complexity but that makes it a lot more um, detailed which I don't want so in this case I'm going to use uh, color levels instead just because we don't need a entire we don't need an entire color curves one for that there we are I quite like how that looks so we have that which will act as our shadow and then this that will act as the texture on the top so we need to make sure that's in the right right area so now it's about setting the color Okay, so what we'll do for this one is first we will deal with our background here. Let's just remove our color card. Um, okay, so there's a million there's a million different ways to do color creation on here. So I'm going to use channel swap. You could also use something like color selector, color levels, color curves, color scale. You could use like a color card in it, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use, first use channel swap, shove that in the middle and then read the alpha channel to our luminance so you can see this color card is red at the back and you see we've only got the um, white bit left all the black bit on the image has been set to alpha so what we can do with this is we can then add in a cutter use that on the cutter and let's just disable that color card there Here I can go color card, this can be our mat, that can be our image, and this color card will act as whatever color we shove there. Want quite a light blue, like this. And then we can, that can be our first one. So what we're doing here is we're taking that, the light area here, we're setting to that light blue, and in the dark area, all we need is a different color card at the back, which will handle our darker color, like this. So now that is our background, set that in a backdrop. That's our first bit, let's add a composite. So that's our first section and then we can do exactly the same on here 
So we want a channel swap. And we can set our alpha channel from, not from alpha, but instead of from our luminance. So as you can see, it's getting rid of the black area on there. So we want to then add a cutter, which that can be our mat. And we can put a color card into it. So you can see that white bit there is our color card. Just set that to a nice blue. Do a composite. Shove all of that into our backdrop. So there we are from this we've created our water texture at the back and then you can always just finesse that later so I think that needs to be a bit of a darker like a richer blue like that and then you can just finesse all your settings so that's one option you can do with um, and that's just by using turbulent noise um, that node so that's one example so let's just shovel that all the way over there so let's try something else Let's just add a photo. Okay, so this is a piece of artwork I did of Tomo from um, Toon Boom Japan. So if I just drag that in, it doesn't matter how it is, whether you're using a photo or whether you're using um, you know, anything else. You could have normal textured brushes, you could have pencil lines, it doesn't matter. So what we could do here, this is our drawing, and we can add a turbulence node onto it. So let's say this image was appearing underwater. We can just drag out our timeline and, and on our turbulence. We can't preview it here, here, but we can use just simple deduction just to figure it out. Let's set it to just as an example 70. You'd obviously finesse this a little bit more if you were um, if you're actually animating it. So we can set our evolution here keyframe that to zero, go all the way over here, keyframe that and set it to whatever number you want. How fast that is depends on what you keyframe. And if we just render that, so if we just put that on loop, you can see it's kind of like uh, water ripples. So if you had a texture that needed to go onto the bottom of um, of a 3D scene, that would work. If you were using it as like a flag, you could also do it using that and just put a, a pole there that hides some of the movement at the corners. Um, that's an option. Um, there's a billion and one different ways you could use that um, technique. And that's just you know, something quick you can do just by, uh, just by animating the evolution moving. Um, you can animate every option here, which means that if you wanted it to slowly um, slowly start changing how intense it is you can just go to your amount keyframe that and have it go from zero to something so you can see it going from one position to the crumpled position so that could be if you're having like um, a photo texture um, and a character crumples it up you could use that so if I show a project I was working on, you can see it's a fairly complicated project, um, not very well organised on my part either. Um, if I just play it, you can see here I've used a turbulence effect just to make the smoke um, coming out there rather than hand animating it. Um, so I'll show you how I did that. I don't remember where it is in the scene, so let's just go into here, our test project, and do it. So what it was was... I'll use red as an example so we can quite easily see it. I drew a shape that kind of looked like that in the direction that I wanted. Then we used turbulence and under turbulence it was as simple as going a separate amount here and increasing the X enough for you to be able to have enough detail. So you had, yeah, you wanted it only applied on the X our frequency, we needed it enough for about, I think I did see. you need it enough to be able to see the texture and I increased the complexity so it was a little bit more detailed 
then what we do is we go to our evolution as we've previously showed increase that is it fast enough so you can go like 25 instead and that should be a bit faster so over evolution you can see it's moving now it looks a bit fake currently so what we can do here is it looks a bit fake so um, since everything else was animated on twos that was by hand I could click this button here which is our put keyframes on come on there we are create keyframes on put it on two and as you can see it only animates on twos then and the rest of the animation can be on ones using that I could then add matte resizes, matte blurs, I could tint the colours, I could do I could, I could composite it I composite it into the scene so it looked like that. But that's just the same technique there. So that's another option. And finally uh, I'll cover it briefly, although a card in the top right hand corner from Zebur Brain, who is a, another Toon Boom YouTuber, um, she covers this in a lot more detail. So if we just create a drawing and if we create a textured brush, so let's just use my Jazza construction pencil because I really like it. If we take our drawing, turbulence, and what we can do here is increase the amount a lot. You can see here the line work is appears to be shaking and appears to be like being redrawn. Now this is an effect called line boiling, and the good thing about this is it means it you can make your line work appear as if you're redrawing it every frame or every two frames rather than having it automatically generated um, saving a lot of work so if I just zoom in that's obviously not a perfect effect version that's a very um, obvious version of the effect but you can see it kind of looks like the lines uh, changing thickness around it um, and line boiling effectively so you would finesse that until it looked uh, the way that you're after um, now you don't necessarily have to uh, animate the evolution you can use a a peg and put it into the position offset and that will that will save you a lot of time and effort to be honest um, to do it that way so that's another that's another option um, so those are just a few examples of what you can do with the turbulence uh, nodes um, obviously there's much more than that that you can achieve but give it a try see what you come up with um, it's that's only scratching the surface of what you can do with the uh, turbulence and turbulence noise uh, turbulent noise nodes I always confuse it and call it turbulence no uh, turbulence noise but it's not so thanks for watching all that YouTube stuff uh, subscribe like comment all of that stuff and I'll see you in the next one